Stay tuned to the very end of this video for a brief but important announcement. Howdy there. Well, folks, we've seen the good, we've seen the bad, so now it's time we take a gander at the strange and the abstract. This is the top 10 weirdest video game commercials. I personally really dig these commercials because they're fun and they kind of just exist in their own realm of weirdness. Like, they couldn't figure out who they wanted their target audience to be, so they just went in the artsy-fartsy direction. Anyway, Shasta and I are all ready to count them down, so here we go! Number 10 Luigi's Mansion Couch Couple like I said a second ago, a lot of these commercials really don't have a target audience. That alone is weird to me with this commercial in mind, because this is for a Mario game. Luigi might be the main character, but it is a Mario game at the end of the day. Regardless, here's what makes this ad so weird. The couple on the couch happens to be a goth lady and a yuppie guy. He leans in for a kiss, only to randomly transport to a room showing clips from the game. After that, it turns out that the goth lady was a GameCube console the entire time. Like, what? Who the hell is this supposed to be geared towards? Goth kids? Preppies? I don't know which. That's probably why this advert is so memorable for me. It's ridiculously random, and that just so happens to be part of its charm. I like this ad quite a bit too, but we put it low on the list because its main defining feature is just plain randomness. Like Ridnick said, the randomness is what makes it memorable. However, the commercials after this are much stranger. Save Mario from the supernatural. <laughs> Luigi's Mansion. Only for Nintendo GameCube. NES, you cannot beat us. This particular advert didn't actually air stateside. This comes all the way from down under in good old Australia. That's right, while we here in America were enjoying mostly normal Nintendo commercials, they decided to scare kids shitless with this. I don't think it's necessarily scary, but I do think the advert strangely makes a point. Almost every NES game is notoriously difficult. The commercial may very well be trying to allude to that, but I still think it's just a little spooky. For starters, you have this creepy looking CG animated guy who looks like he just got off the set of the Money for Nothing music video. He's then joined by a few similarly creepy looking video game characters. Those included are Bowser from Mario, that dog from Duck Hunt, hell even a Smick from Gyromite joins the party. Another thing that makes this commercial unnerving is that they all speak in what can only be described as demonic, computerized voices. As much as I like this commercial, I can't help but wonder what the fuck was Nintendo thinking with this? Nintendo, my boy, you're supposed to want kids to get excited for your console and games, not scare them away. Though, for all I know, this commercial possibly got Aussie children to flock to the NES in droves. 
If there are any Australians watching and you remember this advert, tell me in the comments whether it piqued your interest in the NES or not. We are Nintendo Ultimate TV Game System. We challenge all players. You cannot beat us. Aim your Zappa gun. You cannot beat us. Even with your robot partner. You cannot beat us. So one million. You cannot beat us. Discover new worlds. Jaguar, do the math. Back in the day, many consoles had advertisement slogans. Yeah, in fact, almost every console did. Welcome to the next level for the Sega Genesis. Now you're playing with Super Power for the Super Nintendo. Man, even the 360 had the slogan, Jump In. Late, late 1994 would mark the release of the Atari Jaguar, and they gave it the slogan, Do the Math. For those viewing who don't know, the phrase do the math was coined by Atari so people would know that their console had more bits than others at the time. As far as Atari was concerned, and to make a long story short, more bits meant that the Jaguar was supposedly better. That's a tale for another day though. Moving on, this commercial is strange because the main character, which is this woman here, is absolutely fucking batshit insane. She's teaching a classroom, like they're in school, and as the commercial progresses, she becomes more and more unhinged. Like, I get it, lady. You really, really like the Jaguar, and you want folks to buy one. Which, if you did, and you saw this advert back in the day, you would probably be tempted to buy a Jaguar. Lord knows y'all wouldn't want this crazy person to yell in your face for not owning something. Before I forget, I should note that most of the Jaguars commercials were actually pretty good. It was just that one where the kid barfed in the camera lens. That was just plain gross. Some of you believe your system is the most advanced in the universe. Let's review the numbers. Sega Genesis is 16 bits. 3DO is 32 bits. The Atari Jaguar is 64 bits. Which is more advanced? Clifford! Mm -hmm. 16 and 32 are less than 64. So with 64 bits, 3D graphics, real-world animation, and lightning speed that you can only get with Jaguar, which is more advanced? <laughs> can you repeat the question? Jaguar! 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 Number 7. Rayman 2 PS1 ad. Out of all of Ubisoft's franchises, none compare to Far Cry. However, there is kind of a close second, and that honor goes to the Rayman games. As much as I think the Rayman games are interesting and have a unique art style, I don't think Ubisoft really gives a damn about that franchise anymore. Sad, but hey, what are you gonna do? I remember when this commercial aired on TV all the way back in the year 2000. Man, the series was so fresh back then. N64 owners a year prior were already enjoying this game. It would take a year for PS1 owners like myself to finally get a taste of that action, but when we did, it was pure awesomeness. What makes this advert so strange is that it starts off hella normal, just a teenage kid playing the game. It immediately turns strange when the kid in question, plus some others, randomly turn into Rayman, complete with detached feet, hands, and a head. Freaky shit. I know that nowadays seeing this kind of stuff in a commercial ain't nothing because we live in the future and tech has come a long way, but back 20 plus years ago, this was kind of something to behold. It's visually stunning in a way. Weird as fuck, but very enjoyable to watch. Rayman 2 on the PS1 was in fact a hit, and it was eventually re-released on the PlayStation Network. I reckon part of that success was due to this neat advert. If for nothing else, it at least got folks talking about the game itself. Oh, 
Mortal Kombat Goku. Rayman 2. Now for the PlayStation Game Console. Rated E for everyone. Number 6. The Japanese Link's Awakening commercial. Have you ever wondered what it would be like if you were to watch the Zelda cartoon while under the influence of magic mushrooms? If you have, this is probably what you'd see. Maybe it's my own personal bias talking, but I've always found certain puppets like those ones to be not scary, but bizarre looking. They're straight up uncanny valley in my opinion, which is a positive for this commercial because it adds to the overall weirdness. They even sing in this, and believe it or not, that too is a bit weird. Now, to be frank, I don't feel this way about all puppets. The Muppets, for instance, I've always thought had a unique but relatively normal look. I feel the same about some movie prop puppets from films like the original Jurassic Park. But then you have stuff like this, and to a lesser extent, any kind of string puppet. Their movements, the way that their eyes look, they're just unearthly as hell. Because of how strange this advert is, I can't help but put a smile on my face every time I see it. I may not know what they're saying, but I still rather like it. I find it to be unusually amusing. I agree with Redneck. Puppets do tend to add a whole new level of weird to the mix. What makes me enjoy this commercial though is that it advertises for my second favorite Zelda game. Second only to A Link to the Past. Number five. Phil Hartman pitches the CDI. Okay, now we're getting into the more surreal shit, and that's the main point of this advert. I'd like to go on record for both Redneck and I and say that we're both fans of Mr. Hartman's work. Not only was the man hella funny, but he was also one of the writers for the film Pee Wee's Big Adventure, one of our all-time favorite comedies. Correct Amundo Shas, the man was a prolific SNL member, stand-up comedian, he even lent his acting talents to a few movies. Mr. Hartman was one of, if not the funniest celebrity of the 90s. So, it's very surreal to me that he advertised for possibly the worst console of the 90s. A modern equivalent would be if Dave Chappelle had been in commercials for the Ouya. Most folks already know why the CDI is so infamous. I needn't explain those four Nintendo licensed games, the massive price tag that the CDI launched with, nor its many nifty but ultimately useless features it came with. Actually, I would love to review the CDI and all, but that's a bucket list video, folks. Anyway, another strange thing about Mr. Hartman's participation in the CDI's history is that he wasn't just in one advert, he was in like several. Makes me wonder just how much money did the Phillips company pay Mr. Hartman for his services. Oddly enough, I wouldn't be surprised in the least if Hartman's inclusion in these commercials was enough to drive most of the sales of the CDI. Truth be told, the console itself stayed on the market for about seven and a half years before it was discontinued, and within that time, approximately four and a half million units were sold. Fucking mind-blowing. Today you're watching TV and this guy says... It's CDI, friends, the next generation CD player that works with your TV. And you say... But I have a CD player. And your mom says... No, dear, CDI works with your television. You'd probably feel pretty dumb and maybe even fake it like you'd already experienced the ultimate in games, movies, music, and more. Trust me, babe, I know about this CDI stuff. Now get into CDI, starting at $2.99 with $200 of free software. Number 4 
the earthworm Jim Grandma. To pair a quote Martha Stewart's famous catchphrase, the Earthworm Jim franchise is weird. It's a good thing. In fact, it's more than just a good thing. It's fucking awesome. I'm a 90s kid, so seeing this commercial is nostalgic for me. Oh boy. Here comes his when I was a kid bit. Just roll with it, viewers. He won't reminisce for too long. I promise. Out of all 10 of the commercials that I've chosen for this list, none are as 90s as this one. As a person born literally five days into the 90s decade, I could seriously make a series of videos that just talk about the cool shit from that era, such as the entirety of the Earthworm Jim franchise. Perhaps I might do that. It's something to consider. But back on topic. The advert itself starts off normal. You just get this old lady nicely talking about the Earthworm Jim game. But then the commercial starts becoming a magic mushroom trip where Grandma starts eating worms, and her voice gets scary and deep. As completely insane and off the wall as this commercial is, I find it to be very appropriate for what it's advertising. Like I said before, this is a very 90s commercial, and lots of commercials back then tried to be, shall I say, avant-garde. Yeah, lots of weird, almost expressionist adverts ran the gambit during that time. The Earthworm Jim franchise itself is a product of its time, thus the commercial exemplifies the strange and abstract stuff that you'll inevitably come across while playing the game. I should also note that out of all the commercials on this list, this one is my personal favorite. It may not be the weirdest, but I love it just the same. This is the story of Earthworm Jim video game. In outer space, a sweet evil satellite lost a queen cyberspace suit. Well, it smooshes. Why not I slimy Earthworm Jim? And Boymo, he becomes a superpowered hero. He takes out that precious dog. Then that stupid worm goes onto the planet. He even tries mucus spongy jumping. And if that doesn't stop him, maybe the battle with Queen Festering Sweaty Slug for a butt will. Earthworm Jim from the Nates. Number 3 Original Xbox, Life is Short I'm convinced that the creators of this commercial were high off their balls whilst coming up with it. I almost don't have words. In fact, I'm gonna break tradition here and show y'all this commercial before the end. Need I really explain? It's a commercial where a baby is shot right out of his mother's crotch at the speed of sound, and as he's rocketing through the sky, he starts to age rapidly. It all comes to an end once the baby hits old age, and then crash lands right into a freshly prepared grave. Even as a preteen when I first saw this commercial, it had me thinking, what the hell were they thinking? I pondered over that. And I think Shasta had the right answer. The creators of this ad were very, very, very stoned. How else could you explain the sheer absurdity of this? I can just imagine what was happening while they were coming up with ideas. They probably had big ass blunts full of the real good stuff and they were just blitzed off their nuts. Well, anyway, that was number three. Time to do number two. <laughs> Two. Yoshi's Island Glutton Let me ask you folks something. Have you ever seen the film Monty Python's The Meaning of Life? I sure have. Good film. 
Not the best in the Monty Python movie pentology, I think that honor goes to Holy Grail, it was funnier, but you know, still a pretty damn good film. Meaning of Life is my personal favorite in the pentology. Though in saying that, what little kid is gonna catch the reference that's from that movie in this commercial? Especially when it's for a Mario game. Shasta brings up a valid point. To those of y'all who don't know, the whole commercial references a particular skit within Meaning of Life, where a morbidly obese man eats a whole bunch of food and then explodes. You can see his guts and everything. Admittedly, the scene from the film is actually a bit more disgusting than the commercial simply because there's lots of puking involved. Despite its sheer grossness, Shasta and I both consider it one of the more humorous parts of Meaning of Life. But we both ask, what kid, and I'm talking about a little young kid here, would ever recognize what the reference is from? The film is rated R, after all. I wouldn't let my nephew see it, and he's 10. I might be speaking from a first-hand experience because I actually did see this commercial a few times as a kid. Back then, all I thought was that it was one of the weirdest things I had ever fucking seen in a video game commercial. Still kinda is. Also, it wouldn't be until a few years later at age 15 when I finally caught the reference after seeing the movie in full. It's just epically surreal to me, though, that Nintendo, a mostly family-friendly company, would have one of their adverts for an E-rated game reference an R-rated comedy film from the early 80s. Trippy stuff, man. When is too much, too much? To find out, we crammed everything into Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island. 60 more levels, massive enemies, huge Yoshi tricks, all served up with the latest graphic technology, Morphmation. Mm, no more. Sure you don't have room for another little bonus level? Uh-oh. Super Mario World 2, only on the Super NES. Still the big one. PS3, Alien Girl. Now this one's a real keeper to say the least. I should briefly mention that the other two PS3's launch commercials were strange as well, but neither of them got shit on my number one pick. So strange is this commercial that unlike the other nine I've listed, this one heads straight into Uncanny Valley. I can remember the first time I saw this ad back in 2006. My dad and I were watching TV, I think we might have been watching Cops. Then when the advert started rolling, we saw it. After seeing it, we were both left scratching our heads wondering, why? Why does she have an alien head? Why does she talk like she's from Scotland? Why is she yammering on about quote unquote mental wealth? Why is it so realistic? What's with that weird droning sound? What does any of this fucking shit have to do with the PS3 console? I know what Sony did here. Yeah, they made the commercial this way so that anyone who saw it would talk about it to other folks. Gotta admit, that was actually a pretty smart move. It should be known that during the seventh generation, Sony, in terms of units that were being sold, kinda lagged behind Microsoft and Nintendo. It didn't help that their new console also cost $600 at launch. They had to start pushing some poop somehow, and perhaps this commercial, plus its two siblings, was enough to start moving merch. I mean, I wanted a PS3 before a 360, but that's only because of the hardware issues that the early 360s were known for. Whatever the case may be, for why this commercial exists, one thing is for sure. It's the weirdest ever aired on television. Let me tell you what bugs me about human endeavour. I've never been the human in question. Have you? Mankind went to the moon. I don't even know where Grimsby is. Forget progress by proxy. Land on your own moon. It's no longer about what they can achieve out there in your behalf. But what we can experience, up here, in our own time, it's called mental wealth. <laughs> well, 
That sure was a hell of a romp through Willy Wonka's wild tunnel, now wasn't it? I hope y'all folks enjoyed it. Lord knows Shasta and I did. Anyway, I hope to do more top 10 videos like this in the future. I got lots of ideas coming in here already. For instance, top 10 best Sonic and Mario games, just to name a couple. Me my old hound though, we'll see you guys in the next video. I think I want to review a video game based cartoon again. Hey there, you viewers, and thank you so very much for sticking around to the end for my little announcement. Long story short, I'm going to be MIA for the next few weeks. I have a new desktop PC and all my old files, such as my reviews and my MP3s and all that shit, have to be moved over to the new PC. It's going to take a minute for me to do that, not because there's a lot to move, but because I also have to re-download some software onto my new rig software such as my two video editing programs and Audacity for voice work. I'll be releasing some content in the meantime before I release my video game cartoon review. What's the review going to be of? You know, we'll find that out when the time's right. Okay, folks, stay safe and have yourselves a good one.